Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your spirit, Lord, that rains down every day. We thank you that your hand is not short. That you tell us, Lord, to be strong and courageous, that you'll never leave us or forsake us. We thank you, Lord, for what's happening within the world, even the turmoils, Lord, that you have it all in control. We thank you, Lord, we do not have to fear because we rest in you. We do not have to fear our eternity. We do not have to fear death because we know you as your personal saviour. We thank you, Jesus, for what you've done, what you're doing, what you're going to do, because you never change and you live forever. You're alive. And we thank you for it. We thank you for your blood that was shed at Calvary, at the cross for us, for our remission of sins, that we may have that right relationship with you, the Father God. Thank you, Father God, for sending your Son, Jesus. We thank you for allowing your Holy Spirit to live, to stay, to abide within us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being within us, possessing us, being in control of us, guiding us, taking us into greatness to be more like Jesus. And we pray today, Lord, as we hear your word, that we would be open to receive from you. We thank you for each person here, Lord. We thank you that you've called these people together for such a time as this, part of your family and your body, to do your will in this area. And we don't take that lightly, Lord. We know that we all have a price to pay. And we pray, Lord, today that you would help us to pay that price, to abide in Christ more. And we thank you, Lord, for this morning, for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Children, you can go out. I feel to preach right now. Sorry, AJ. Thank you, music team. Take your Bibles out to Mark this morning. I feel to preach first up this morning. Mark chapter 4. The seeds of life or abiding in Christ. Whatever you like to call this message, that's fine with me. Mark chapter 4. Verse 1. Have you got it? Easy to find. Here we go. And Jesus began to teach by the, by the lake, and the crowds gathered round him that were so large that he got into the boat and s- sat in it out on the lake. While all the people were along the shore of the water's edge, he taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, notice the farmer is scattering seed. He's not just putting one seed here and there. We tend to go out and plant a seed in people's lives. He says, scatter it. Get it out there to as many as you can, as many places that you can. Some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places we did not have much soil. Understand that. Some fell on places that it did not have much soil. You know, seed is thrown out even within this place. There are people that don't have much soil to hold the word and to grow. How's your soil? It sprang up quickly. But their soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. So they had no root. Come on, say it. Have no root. If we don't have any root, we can't be strong. Other seeds fell upon the thorns which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seeds fell on good soil and it came up. It grew and produced a crop multiplied 30, 60, and even 100 times. When Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. 
When he's alone, the twelve of the others around him asked him about the parables and he told them the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those who are outside, everything is said in parables so that they may never be seeing and never perceiving and never hearing but never understand. Otherwise, they may turn and be forgiven. See, the time wasn't right. Christ hasn't gone to the cross. When Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seeds on the path where the word is sown. And as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like the seeds sown in the rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word not not just persecutions and troubles in life but because of the word they quickly fall away still others like seeds sown amongst the thorns hear the word but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires of other things come in and choke the word making it unfruitful like seed, others are like seeds sown on good soil. They hear the word, they accept it, they produce a crop 30, 60, and even 100 times that was sown. We have heard this preached so many times in our Christian walk to non Christians. We've heard it say that the path, that the ones that are thrown on the path, that the word of God goes out and you preach the word to someone and they just don't get it and it gets taken away. And we see it over and over because we sow seeds and people just don't hear it. Your family or whatever, they just can't hear it because the enemy just blinds their eyes. You just can't catch it because it's the spirit of God that reveals God. And when you're born again by the spirit of God... It's like the blinkers fall off and you can understand what life is about. And you can understand the word and understand what people are saying to you. We have heard that we sow the seeds and they get taken away. And what sort of person are you today? Have you heard the seed of Jesus Christ and it's been taken away? And your salvation you've missed. We have heard this story. Where it's gone in the rocky places and then those people out there that that come and they accept the word. And they hear it at once and they hear it with joy and they accept it. But then the things of the world choke them and they leave. And these Christians who become Christians no longer walk with the Lord. And we see it, don't we, all the time. The worries and the troubles of the world. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, do not worry. Look at the birds, look at the fields. I look after them, you're more important than them. As Christians, we need to understand, we don't have to worry. See, God's got it in control. If you worry, that means you put yourself above God and you become God. You cannot become God. So you must humbly sit under God and know about his superiority and his sovereignty that he has things in control. Otherwise, you play God when you worry. Come on, think about that. The worries of the world choke these new Christians out because they have no root. And we see it. They don't grow. As soon as they come and accept Jesus Christ and they're excited and they go, whoa, this is it. This is all about what Christianity, I got it. But they do not get into the word. They do not have someone disciple them. They do not get into a new Christian's foundation class and see it as important. And then they have no roots and they fall away. We've heard that. Then we hear about those who are thrown in the good soil. Those Christians who hear it and accept it. And they start producing great crops. 30, 60, 100 times. Many times they've accepted it. And you see, Jesus Christ is in the multiplication business. He's not in the addition business. 30, 60, 100 times from one seed. It's not like going to Yates where you find a lot of them are dead seeds and you only get a few in a packet. Every seed is potent in God. Every seed is powerful in God. 